Hello, and welcome to part one of the Frameworks Examples module. In this module, we're going to present an overview of scope, commonality, and variability analysis as a method for developing and applying software product lines, and most importantly, frameworks. We're then going to give a quick overview of scope, commonality, and variability analysis applied to Android and ACE, which are open source platforms we'll be using throughout the course to demonstrate the concepts of patterns and frameworks. Before we talk about scope, commonality, and variability analysis, however, let's first give a quick summary of what a software product line is. A software product line is a form of systematic software reuse. It's basically a set of software-intensive systems that share common managed sets of features that satisfy specific needs of a particular market segment or mission or domain. Software product lines are developed from a common set of core assets in a prescribed way. As we'll see throughout this entire module, but especially this first part, frameworks and patterns can help to develop and define and improve software product lines by factoring out many reusable general purpose and domain specific services from the responsibility of the application developers. If you take a look at this URL, you'll see a lot more information about software product lines by some of the groups at the Software Engineering Institute who have pioneered and promulgated this perspective for a number of years. So let's talk now about scope, commonality, and variability analysis. Key software product line and framework structures and behaviors can be captured using scope, commonality, and variability analysis. It's basically a way to look for things that are going to be common and therefore fixed and stable and worthwhile to build your overall solution around because they don't change a lot, as well as identifying things that can change, that can vary, the so-called variabilities. One of the key themes we'll see here is to find ways to take the variabilities and provide a common interface to them so that when they change, it doesn't break other parts of the product line or the applications or the frameworks that are using, that are using these techniques in order to achieve systematic reuse. We're going to be applying scope commonality and variability analysis to guide the development and application of software product lines and frameworks. If you take a look at the URL at the bottom of this slide, you'll see a paper written a number of years ago that goes into more detail about the method of scope, commonality, and variability analysis. And I highly encourage you to take a look at this. It provides a good grounding for what we're about to talk about. So let's talk about how we might apply scope, commonality, and variability analysis to, to Android. The scope defines the domain and context of Android and its various frameworks and components. Android naturally is targeted towards resource-constrained mobile devices, where they may have limited power, limited memory, limited processors, at least limited compared to laptops and desktops or servers, limited network access, perhaps over uh, wireless links, perhaps over cellular networks and so on. And there also may be some limits on, on the price point. People may want to provide a range of different alternatives, some for the very high-end users, some for the more bargain price-sensitive users. Android's also focusing, of course, on touchscreen modalities, interacting by touching the screen with your finger with various gestures as opposed to interacting through a physical keyboard. There are some physical keyboard Android devices, but they are distinctly in the minority. Android also provides a largely open source vendor and hardware agnostic ecosystem. And I say largely because it turns out that there are some reasons, some good reasons, and some technical reasons why some parts of Android are not available in open source form. And the architecture of Android actually applies scope, commonality, and variability analysis to determine which parts are fixed, the interfaces, for example, and which parts vary, the implementations for specific devices, for specific sensors. Android is also targeted towards the installed base of Java application developers. There's lots of people out today who understand how to write Java applications. It is possible to write C and C++ services and applications in Android using the native development kit, but that is not a common thing to do. Most people who are developing apps are doing them in Java. You can find out more about Android by taking a look at this URL. 
So let's talk about some of the commonalities of Android. These are things, common attributes that you'll find on all the different incarnations of Android and its various frameworks. At the core are the common framework components we've talked about several times throughout the course. Things like activities, services, content providers, broadcast receivers, and so on. And then there's a set of common application frameworks that extend and instantiate and enhance, build upon these core framework components to provide reusable services that you need on mobile devices. Things like knowing where you are, location managers, things for handling telephony services, uh, instant messaging through SMS or MMS, things like being able to download packages from an app store and be able to install them on your phone in a, in a secure and signed way and so on. And then Android also provides a number of common infrastructure elements. The intense framework, which is used to disseminate events between producers and consumers using publisher, subscriber, and observer-like patterns. The binder driver and binder frameworks, which are used for highly optimized local inter-process communication between application activities and services running on the same device. There's also common infrastructure with respect to the hardware abstraction layer we just talked about. There's also common device driver frameworks that come from the, the Linux portion of Android. So there's a lot of commonality going on here, which is great because it makes it a lot easier to learn Android and to extend it in various stylized ways for your particular needs. There also, of course, are some variabilities. These are the attributes that may be unique to particular instantiations of Android. Uh, for example, there's a number of different product-dependent components. Uh, different vendors provide different kinds of look and feel user interfaces to wrap their branded skins around the more generic Android infrastructure. There's also, of course, a need to be able to have different kinds of sensors and hardware devices, things like different kinds of cameras and so on. And there's a need to be able to have different types of drivers, possibly at the hardware abstraction layer implementation, that factor out these differences, which are oftentimes proprietary. There are also a number of different ways of assembling components that are product dependent. So for example, different vendors may bundle different subsets of applications. Some vendors may have their own maps applications. Some vendors may have their own email applications. Some vendors may prefer to use the open source versions that come bundled with the Android open source release and so on. And of course, there's also different assemblies for different types of telephony protocols, uh, CDMA versus GSM various kinds of hardware and software and operating system configurations based on footprint or price uh, performance form factors and so on. As you can see, the bulk of the discussion we've applied so far for scope, commonality, and variability analysis has focused largely on macro level issues, sort of the overall architecture of Android. As we discuss this topic a little further, we'll all start, also start to drill down recursively and apply this commonality and variability analysis to the various frameworks and components in Android as well. Let's shift gears a little bit and talk about how we could apply scope, commonality, and variability analysis to another platform, in this case, the Adaptive Communication Environment, or ACE. Uh, ACE is essentially a set of C++ libraries and toolkits and frameworks and so on that uh, we've been developing for over 20 years. ACE is designed primarily, its scope is primarily in the layer of object-oriented host infrastructure middleware. If you recall our earlier discussions about middleware layers, host infrastructure middleware is the layer that sits on top of the operating systems and underlying protocols to shield the higher level middleware services and applications from the accidental complexities and diversity of those lower level system APIs. It provides a number of different capabilities. It encapsulates some of the tedious and error-prone aspects of programming on different operating systems by refactoring and providing a portability facade. And it also goes one step further to provide a way of encapsulating and enhancing the C APIs with easier to program, easier to compose, easier to understand object-oriented C++ interfaces, things called wrapper facades that we'll talk about in a moment. Like Android, ACE is also available completely in open source form. It's got a vendor and hardware and operating system agnostic ecosystem. The main difference is that unlike Android, ACE is focused on C++ developers, primarily on developers who are trying to build infrastructure software, various kinds of reusable services, middleware, and so on, and or applications that have to run in 
distributed real-time embedded systems, which are typically mission critical and where the right answer delivered too late becomes the wrong answer. You can learn more about ACE by taking a look at this URL. So let's talk a little bit about some of the commonality and the commonalities in ACE, things that you're going to find on all the different instantiations. Uh, one of the things it provides is a portability layer, an operating system adaptation layer that provides POSIX-like APIs that shields the higher layers of ACE and other middleware that may rest upon it, as well as any applications developed using its services and components from the low-level platform-specific details and dependencies. On top of this abstraction layer are a set of C++ wrapper facades. These wrapper facades provide an object-oriented interface to operating system services, things like local and remote interprocess communication, concurrency, synchronization, event demultiplexing and uh, multiplexing, file system interfaces, dynamic linking, and so on. These wrapper facades implement something called the wrapper facade pattern, and we'll talk more about this later in the course. And finally, ACE also provides a set of C++ frameworks. These C++ frameworks handle a wide variety of different design dimensions that we've talked about earlier in this, in this uh, course. They handle things like synchronous and asynchronous event demultiplexing and event handling, various forms of concurrency, layered service composition and processing, uh, various forms of connection setup and service handler initialization, static and dynamic configuration, and so on. And it basically makes it possible to write a lot less application code and let ACE and the frameworks do much of the heavy lifting on your behalf in a very efficient and portable way. There also, of course, are some variabilities. Uh, there are product and domain dependent components in ACE. Many of the implementations depend very heavily on the specific details of the underlying oper the operating systems and protocols. And they try to factor out those, those various diversities and heterogeneities so that the interfaces seen by the application developers are common. But naturally, the frameworks and the platform implementations have to be full aware of these kinds of uh, diversities and variabilities. There are also various types of product-dependent component assemblies with ACE. Not all users want to use all parts of this large platform. So it's possible to go in and subset different parts of ACE, extract out the pieces you need, leave behind the ones you don't want, which is important for people running in memory constrained and processor constrained real-time and embedded systems where they can't afford the luxury of the whole enchilada of all these pieces of software. As with Android, we'll talk later about applying scope commonality and variability analysis to other parts of ACE. This has mostly been a macro level tour at a high level through the various pieces. We'll also drill down later and talk more specifically about commonality and variability in its various application frameworks and services as well. So to wrap up this section, scope, commonality, and variability analysis is an advanced technique for ensuring systematic software reuse. This method helps developers alleviate problems that arise when maintaining lots of different versions of the same product, especially when these products have large amounts of similar software that was often created in an ad hoc way to satisfy new and diverse requirements. And scope commonality and variability analysis helps you to refactor a lot of that commonality to make it cleaner, easier to maintain. As we discussed here, the frameworks that are provided in ACE and Android form software product lines that enable this systematic software reuse across a wide range of different apps and infrastructure environments and platforms.